Welcome to Hops News, the trusted source in beer culture news. Here's your host, Jay Brew, with special guests, the Hoppy Mommy, Lucky, and Mash. Wow, Justin. Hey, welcome to another episode, man, <laughs> and it does not fail. It does not fail. We are, uh, we're going to pull it together. We're going to pull this, <laughs> we're going to pull this one together. It, uh. It's always an interesting time to get our episode started here, and uh, tonight doesn't let us down. Appreciate you joining us. Have another awesome episode lined up for you tonight, but I will tell you, I am still riding away from Tuesday night. Um, that was a pretty special episode, and uh, having cons on with us is kind of the highlight for me so far. I'll have to admit that. That... Uh, that was a special episode, having a guy that's that dedicated uh, to the cause and to continue to do things like that is, is pretty amazing. If you weren't able to check that episode out, go check it out. It's on our YouTube. Uh, great episode. Tonight, we've got Mash's all-time favorite beer and brewery probably lined up. We've got Shipyard that's going to be joining us here in just a minute. And I will tell you, Mash has got a shipment of that beer. He'll tell you about it in just a second that just literally hit his doorsteps today. So Mash is stoked like he's headed to the prime with a guarantee. Um, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Mash is you pretty, no pretty, idea. pretty stoked tonight. So it's, it's going to be a great episode. Uh, going to be great to talk to the folks there at the shipyard and uh, hear all about the awesome stuff they do through beer. But before we get started... Um, I've shared it a little bit. Uh, we are continuing to help folks in local communities. And on Saturday, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, the High Country Beer Fest, which is a very well-established beer fest in the High Country of North Carolina, uh, Boone, North Carolina, uh, we are going to assist. We're going to provide some streaming support uh, for their bir virtual beer fest. Obviously, with everything that's going on with the pandemics, um, it has taken a hit on all kinds of beer festivals. But uh, we're going to try to still help them maintain relevancy in a, uh, in a tough time and hopefully help them raise some money as well. Uh, be a, they've got a good lined up. Um, they've got some great things going on for it. got some great videos. And if you didn't see what I shared earlier, some of the prizes they have for their raffle tickets is amazing. They've got a seller collection from a local bottle shop called Peabody's that values at $500. Man, <laughs> 
I might have to buy a couple of raffle tickets for that one because it's got some great beers in it. But uh, it'll be good Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern. We'll start on the High Country Beer Fest uh, Facebook group. I believe also that we've got a YouTube account set up that we're going to hit. Um, so going to help some folks there. Next Thursday is going to be a little bit of a change up for us. Uh, some of you have probably heard us hinting around at some of the other things that we're doing in the community, but uh, we're going to go do some work for Total Wine out of Concord, North Carolina. Um, big engagement for us, to be honest with you, and actually pretty huge. Uh, we're going to go down there and help them stream a, um activation down there for a beer that's being released that I'll talk about a little bit later here in this episode. So MASH is actually going to take it up. And speaking of MASH, let's go check out with MASH there in Mountain Home, Idaho. MASH, you're going to be the man next Thursday. You, you've got to be super stoked all the way around tonight. Oh, man, you know, like I said, Tuesday, it's been a really, really, despite everything in the world going on, despite this year, it's been a killer last week of my life. And as I was sitting there at work today, I was like, ah, oh, man, you know, I've been missing, I guess, Shipyard's obviously my favorite beer. Pumpkinhead, without a doubt, you know how, how giddy I get. That is my favorite beer. I've never been able, I've never lived in a place without it. And now here I am in Idaho, can't get it. But uh, somebody I am friends with came through in the clutch. I have here cinnamon, sh- sugar, rim, and all the delicious nectar of the gods. The golden, golden fountain of youth, the pumpkin head. And uh, so t- it's good, man. It's good. And uh I've got my smashed pumpkin bottle, my uh, my pumpkin head candle. Got the glasses out. Got the shirt on. Look, I I'm, a, I'm kind You're of a total uh, fanboy. I, sh- I should be ashamed of myself, but I have no shame in this. And so, if uh, you know, if I'm not repping the Bruins, I'm not repping the Packers. It's uh, definitely definitely Shipyarder. I'm excited. I'm really excited that uh, Bruce can join us tonight, and I'm excited that Shipyard's here and talk with those guys and well like you just said i'm really excited to be able to produce next week um it's gonna be big shoes to fill i won't be able to fill quite as good as uh, jay does but I'll, I'll do my best and we have pontoon on next week so that'll be a really good episode no man you'll do just fine if if anybody if nobody's checked out hop geeks news there you go man that is about the most basic shot you can get <laughs> oh my God. Man, you needed to wear a scarf you needed to wear some kind yeah. of a plaid yeah. scarf Oh, okay. you should you should check if if you we we do a promo video each month. Hoppy did this month. Uh, I'm going to be doing October's. Check back on our page October. I'm going to be I'm going out all stops, man. I'm going scarf, going North Face, every New England. As you know, I'm from from Boston, <laughs> so every New England trope of uh, basic fall. That's going to be me in our video. And uh, if I get more of these delicious beers, I'm, I'm planning on laying out in a, a pumpkin patch of a uh, pumpkin head. So just just a little sneak peek, baby. Just a little sneak peek head. for you guys. If anybody f- can find a ball cap that just says basic on the front of it, <laughs> oh, please. I can find one Better of those. I will, I will pay for that. And MASH, I know, <laughs> will wear that thing proudly. MASH, I will tell you, I'm not the least bit concerned about your, uh, your producing ability. <laughs> Uh, what you guys do with Hops Geeks News is pretty amazing, man. So I, I know next Thursday you'll also be able to crush it um, producing that live show. So if nobody's checked it out, go check it out on YouTube. You'll also check it out on uh, most of the major podcast platforms, iHeartRadio being our most popular right now. Hops News, they've got episodes up there called Hops Geeks News. Uh, it's pretty cool, man. And speaking of that, we've got a, are we having like a boys live preview posts what i mean we've got to come up with something should. uh i've started watching season one again just to refresh on yeah. that but um we should do a live I'm, reaction to the first episode oh, uh, like a live fun. like discuss the first episode live oh yeah, be, man that would be pretty sweet huh yeah our next geek episode is definitely going to be recapping season one and uh, talking a little bit about the comic nice. um but yeah that'd be cool to do a reaction episode speaking of hoppy Mash, I'm not the least bit worried. You're crush it Thursday, man. I love your basicness, though, man. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. you. <laughs> Hoppy, how are things down in Florida? You got back to Disney, I saw. That's pretty special. Yeah. You got to be as, as, as pleased as you could be at this point with everything that's going on. Yeah, um, Disney was very interesting. I held off going for a while. They've been open since July. Uh, but everyone who went was not concerned about anything. They said it was empty. 
Um, and the masks are hot to wear. You have to wear a mask. But, you, you know, whenever you get a beer, you just pull to the side, take your mask off, and you can drink as long as you're not near anybody. So um, we didn't get all the way around the world because we weren't allowed to walk and drink. But um, we had quite really? a few amazing beers. Um, yeah, because that was the first thing everyone's like, well, I'm just drinking while I'm walking, so I don't have to wear the mask. <laughs> Oh, so now, that makes yeah. a lot of sense, yeah. So now they say for you, the only time you can take it off is if you're to the side and they have more tables set up and they're all six feet apart and they have a, a huge building I'd never been inside of that I guess they do events for, like, fancy people that um, was all air-conditioned and spread out tables and drinks and I had a Parish Brewing Ghost in the Machine double IPA there, so that was delicious. Mm. Um, and anybody who wants to see, I did post a little video on our YouTube channel. Um, I'll post it probably on the, the Hops News page tomorrow. But uh, no, it was a lot of fun, and I'm going over to Hollywood Studios next Tuesday to um, go to Star Wars Land because I haven't been there since probably January. Um, oh no! So I'm to do that. I dare. What was you? Oh no! <laughs> the longest I've gone without going. So we think of the children. Years. In almost ten <laughs> but, um, years. That's pretty amazing. One of the breweries I love drinking at Epcot for their food and wine and all their different festivals is Shipyard. So I'm excited to get to talk to them as well. Like, I love the maple. They do a maple uh, bacon porter every flower and fruit festival and some great holiday beers, too. Did you just Damn, say, good. Did you just yes. say a maple night. and bacon porter? Yes, and it's delicious, and they always have it for flower and garden festival at Shipyard Brewing. And they had a really good, like, Reese's brown one. I mentioned it a little oh bit like, a couple weeks ago, but yeah. So, so I'm drinking out my. I'm actually not drinking shipyard yet. I have a shipyard on deck, but I'm drinking oh, the yeah. Bramari from um, IPA. This is delicious. Yeah, the Neon Ghost. Yeah, that's a great beer. Out of my How do we get beer. like a case of that maple bacon porter? That, yeah, right. Is it? Oh. Do they bottle it? I have Funky Buddha maple bacon coffee here, but I got I've one of those too. Shipyards at Disney. We'll have to ask. Oh, man, I'm. I'm ready to bring him out, and we're not even there yet. Who do we got to go check out next? Lucky. <laughs> Lucky. How are things in Milwaukee, Wisconsin? They're good, man. We're uh, not quite in Kenosha where the world is burning down, but um, here in Milwaukee, things are good. It's super hot. I'm, like, sweating right now as we speak. Is it 68? Um, Me too, but because <laughs> I'm drinking pumpkin heads. Definitely not 68. I think when I was walking my dog earlier, it was 94, which is, it's mm. very toasty up here. Um, yeah, things are good. I am still like rock hard from uh, Tuesday's episode. I'm excited to have <laughs> Shipyard on, but Cons was such an awesome guest. He's a dream guest. Thank you so much to everybody that showed up and showed out. I don't know. I didn't see the exact numbers, but I think it was a pretty good night for us. A couple and, thousand. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot, a lot, a lot of fun, and I'm glad he's a uh, he's uh, me and producer Beef also. Um, it's like one of his favorite people on the planet. So it was awesome, awesome uh, episode. But I'm ready. It's technically Friday for me, so I uh, got more than one reason to celebrate tonight. Man, you're be probably, drinking tonight, yeah, I guess. You're probably going all out tonight, then, ain't you? Oh yeah, I'm <laughs> that's how you open right up now. that mass landing, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, I believe this was from Robbie. Nice. Robbie. It's just like a Reese's cup, doesn't it? Oh, it's so good. It's very, very good. It's uh, kind of like the, um, what's the Belgian beaver peanut butter? Oh, That's what I thought of right away. Um, this one's I think, is a little less sweet, which I kind of like, but um, it's very, very good. Nice. Yeah, I got fridge man they're wicked good appreciate yeah. you hanging out with us we'll come back to me real quick i forgot to mention my beer this one is from brad one of our hey. hops news family mother members Got southern grist summer crisp it is a pilsner with lime and sea salt and it is <laughs> phenomenal hmm. phenomenal phenomenal so back to all four of us. Man, it's great to have you guys back together. Uh, great episode Tuesday. Some amazing stuff. Don't forget, bomber jackets are being given away. There'll be a bomber jacket given away for donations to the Maine Cancer Foundation. We've already got a few of them that have donated. Let's hit those donations up real quick. Mash, Hoppy, Corey is a Hops News family member. Corey, we definitely appreciate you, man. We've got Lucky 
Corey says, good evening. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for tuning in. Um, Going to be another great episode. Just a reminder for the those in the Hops News family, uh, PBR level and above, or Pale Ale and le- above level. We'll have the Zoom after hours right after this. It's always a good time. Khan's hung out with us just about the entire time. Oh, Plus God. Some, he was on yeah. for another hour. Yeah, last show. week. So that was pretty special, man. It was it was great to get to learn uh, more about him in the after hours. It was always a good time. We'll have a, I'll have a special giveaway as well. We'll talk about it a little bit later on. For anybody that joins at the Pale Ale level and above tonight, if they do, and anybody that donates will be entered for another drawing of something a little bit different uh, in addition to the Hops News. So stick around to the end of the episode. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more. But let's go check in with Bruce. Bruce, Bruce. you still hanging out in the green room? I'm hanging. I'm here with you guys. I got a tough act to follow up for that Tuesday show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bruce. I'm not sure if you're uh, if you're familiar with who Captain Cons is from Zero Blog Thirty or not, but uh, we were uh, we were pretty surprised ourselves to land that fish. But I will tell you right now, there is nobody jacked more about an episode tonight <laughs> than Mash about having shipyard. This is shipyard a white whale, here. man. This is my <laughs> no, white whale. No. Now, Mash, how does the Boston boy end up in Idaho? Uh, so, it is, long story short, I am in the Air Force, actually. So, uh, I joined about nine years ago. I got, I got went to Florida after this, and uh, luckily, down in Florida, you can get pumpkin head still. So, I didn't live without it. And then I came back to New Hampshire, where I got to live for a couple of years. But then they decided to send me somewhere I probably don't belong, and that is the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I and so... Yeah, that's that's kind of how I'm out here. I'm about 40 minutes away from Boise, which the beer scene in Boise is pretty good, but it's nothing like I was I was spoiled with out in Portland. That's for sure. So you've been sent to Alcatraz, basically. For a while. That's that's honestly how it feels. It's like every small town Hallmark movie where they're like they're from the middle of nowhere. It's just the middle of the desert. That's exactly how it is. I was thinking the other day. I'm like, man, I really just miss rain. Like just a cloud in the sky. I'll take. So um. Well, great. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Um, sorry about the delay um, catching on to the first call. But So tell me a little bit about the Bomber Jacket in support of the uh, Maine Cancer Foundation. Yeah, we do. A, we have our own Bomber Jacket. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Bomber Jackets. They're, uh, they advertise themselves as better than koozies, and they are definitely they that. Are. Um, I was going to say which they are. Yeah, they're pretty amazing product. Great quality, um, great craftsmanship, great printing. Um, they do some amazing graphics along their line, um, and we feature we feature a nonprofit every episode. So all of our live episodes, we feature a nonprofit, and we raise a little bit of money for them. And speaking of money raised so far, look at these numbers so far. We this is actually a little bit low because what I don't have accounted for is all of the pay, PayPal or GoFundMe's and that sort of thing that we've dropped links for. So during our episodes, we've raised uh, one thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars. Uh, local actually, supports through 3, yep. Local supports through what are what we do with uh, like we're gonna do with the beer fest um, this Saturday. Uh, we've raised just north of thirty-five thousand um, dollars for a total of about thirty-seven thousand dollars. So, Bruce, a big part of what we what we're doing, uh, kind of our start was at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, just helping nonprofits stay relevant and and doing what we can do to kind of push that ball. So. Tonight, we'll, at the end of the episode, have a random drawing from somebody that's donated and drop them a bomber jacket um, just as a, as a thank you for donating. So, Do we know who we picked for uh, last episode yet or no? No, I haven't picked it yet. I usually try to mail them out once a week, and I'll go back and pick somebody at random, use a random number generator or something like that. But uh, it's definitely uh, – it helps kind of spur the interest and, and kind of helps us uh, create a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of a movement here and, and generate some money for some great nonprofits. So I can elaborate a little bit on Maine Cancer. Uh, their primary event, uh, annual event for raising um, funds for research, is what's called Try for a Cure. And it's a women's only event. It's the largest try in the state of Maine. 1,300 women participate in a sprint try. Uh, a lot of women do all three disciplines. Uh, often there's teams of three. 
and uh, raising upwards of $2 million annually for uh, Maine cancer research and also supporting families in Maine who have been disrupted by cancer, whether it's um, financially or emotionally or a family member. Um, so it's a very powerful organization and powerful uh, event in the state. And unfortunately this year, as you can imagine, um, it's being done virtually. Mm. So we created a beer called Pink Lemonade Shandy, and the beer is actually, I wouldn't call it pink necessarily, but it's a red hue. <laughs> We're using a beet juice concentrate on top of a um, pale ale with some wheat and um, lemonade and limeade to create this beautiful beer, refreshing. And every participant in the virtual traffic cure gets a complimentary can and um, a dollar for every case of beer gets donated back to the Maine Cancer Foundation in support of cancer research and, and everything else I talked about. So thank you so much for what you're doing. Um, we're doing our part as well. And um, given all the circumstances and these events and how they've been restricted, uh, what you're doing and we're doing together is, is a big, big help, big help. And so thank you for that. Yeah. And, and thank you guys. And, and that is, you know, that's kind of what picked us up with the whole live streaming thing was the pandemic and just started a happy hour, started a happy hour type virtual happy hour and just trying to figure out what we can do uh, to help organizations like that. Because these these times that not only not only nonprofit organizations, but breweries as well is is unprecedented and, and the impact we still don't know what that is going to be uh at the end of the day but bruce um one thing i'd like to know from you is is where was your beer start what was the beer that you first remember drinking and and at what age was that so uh, i'm gonna date myself here my beer was a slit oh yeah oh a slit no way no. <laughs> yeah now we're talking Actually, it was a bottle of beer, and it was called Schlitz Graf. It had D-R-A-U-G-H-T or something to that effect on the label. Mm. Not that it was, of course. Um, but um, I, you know, I gravitated to beer probably like most people of my generation. It started with um, Schlitz and then experimented with Budweiser and then went over to Heineken and dabbled in some imports. And then, um, obviously, the craft beer revolution started in late 80s, early 90s. And um, I guess you could call me an early adopter. Nice. nice. Yeah, that's, uh, that's awesome. So your first bottle of Schlitz, most of our guests and, and most of the people on this side of the, uh, the mic, um, we, we, we definitely were drinking before we were 21. What age were you when you had that Schlitz? So, again, um, when I was growing up, the drinking age was 18. Ah. So... So, so 13. <laughs> Fun fact, I was actually six. Yeah. And if you, if you think of it today, guys, can you, I mean, you can imagine going to a bar or restaurant seeing a 19 or 21 year old sneaking away. But can you imagine having a 16 or 15 or 7 year old getting away with it with a fake ID? Mm. That's the way it was. Wow. Nice, nice. Yeah, I most of us. Pretty- most of us were stealing beers from our uncles or grandfather's refrigerator or whatever it may be. So we can, I can definitely appreciate that. That's, that's got to be something special when you can walk in and present an ID card that even if it's fake at 15 and buy some beer. I actually, so I, I, when I joined the army, I went to Korea was my f- second duty assignment. And when I went there, U S soldiers could still buy beer at 18. So um, that was a little bit of a shift for me because I was I was drinking beer I think at 19 as well so legally and we had them <laughs> this is way back they actually had beer and vending machines in the barracks that never had Jeez. beer in them after they were filled but <laughs> I'm gonna need them to bring that trend back <laughs> yeah that was, that that's actually, crazy that was in South Africa I saw that as well yeah that was pretty crazy there was no need to check IDs needless to say they were just whoever stuck money into it but uh, yeah I can definitely appreciate that and that had to be some uh, some different times for sure and schlitz we just talked about that beer because obviously our our uh, host there lucky up there in milwaukee um is kind of the heart of uh of domestic beer in the u.s got all of them up here schlitz is a it was a staple back in college um schlitz and blatz i don't know if you guys ever had blatz but i actually almost lived in the old blatz brewery building 
um, they like redid it. They took out like all wow. of the offices and turned them into um, turned them into like uh, condos. And awesome. thought about getting one of those, but they're really expensive. You're paying for the name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for the blast name. <laughs> so the Bruce, you you came name. up in the in the craft beer scene a little bit earlier. After probably like most, moving to imports after some domestics. What was the first real craft beer that you remember drinking? Shipyard. My, oh, yeah. my uh, <laughs> okay, hold on. I can't. I can't. You're breaking up a little bit, but I've got to hear this story. How did that? How did that happen? Can you hear me now? Yep, I sure yes. can. Okay. So my cousin started Shipyard Brewing Company as a brew pub in Kennebunkport, Maine, in 1992. Oh. And um, wow. so <laughs> business was great in the summer, but it sucked in the winter. And. uh I have been in the distribution business and been in the bar business, and I volunteered. I mean that word um, verbatim. I volunteered to work for him to help get his company going. And for four four months, I was part of the all-volunteer army. And um, just trying to keep the brewers busy, keep the tanks full by selling the beer outside of his property. And um, fast forward to today, never, never, none of us ever dreamed it, thought it, saw it. Um, but... Um, here we are today, you know, a couple million cases of beer a year later, and it's just it's been a great ride. But Thank um, you so one thing much I like to tell starting. people is, I do these presentations about the history of shipyard quite frequently. And in 1980, there were 79 breweries in America. <laughs> wow! Wow! Which is the era wow. that I grew up drinking beer. Yeah. It, it was the homogenization of beer in America. Everybody was brewing lager. If you were a, a aficionado, you would be buying uh, an import like Bath or maybe Bex or maybe Heineken. And uh, as you know, fast forward today, uh, last report, I believe there's over 8,000 uh, breweries. So, you know, basically the, all of us on this call tonight have to lived through the, um, the re- a revolution of beer in America. And, in, and it's something that will probably never be duplicated again. Yeah, it's funny you say that because we we do do an international episode every once in a while, and I will tell you, just in the, so it's been, a well, 93 is when I graduated, so it's been a minute that I've been out of high school, but just in that time frame, uh, just in that time frame, I remember going to Europe and Germany, and that was still the craze of beer, was German beer and the European beer. And I would say now that that narrative is completely flipped. Um, you, you go there, and it's something special if you can find some American craft beer, um, especially some solid IPAs over there. Uh, it's completely flipped upside down. So I think you're right. It's it's definitely been a revolution, and it's pretty amazing. And I think that the I think you could almost safely say that the beer industry has replaced the industrial revolution. Right, we we yeah. lost so much. Indi- we lost so much industry um, in those times, and now beer is such a huge industry in the United States. I, I don't know what the overall number is, but I'm sure it's an impressive number. You're absolutely right. When you think about the people we employ in the state of Maine, it's one of the few um, growing industries. At least it was before COVID nineteen. Um, we've had uh, the paper industry in decline. Um, and tourism is obviously our leader, but the brewing industry, as far as manufacturing, has be, been the one bright economic um, development in Maine's economy over the last probably 10 to 15 years. And now we have about 145 breweries in the state of Maine. And you're right, the economic impact on a state of 1.2 million people is, is huge. Im- Huge, yeah. Um, and we and the beer not only does it employ people who make the beer, distribute the beer, sell it at retail, but also draws tourism to the state of Maine to come taste, feel, see the production, the facilities that we make the beer in. So it's it's really been an um, you know a, a godsend to our economy. Nice. So what's your what shipyards production? What what's your annual barrels that you guys usually produce? We're around eighty-five thousand barrels a year. Nice. And um, oh um, man, that's awesome. He just wants we, we've to had it. we've had some we've had some better years, but you know with the proliferation of so many new breweries, you know the, the pie gets diluted a little bit. Um, oh. And but you, this this may or not be uh, relevant to this call, but about uh, four months ago we released 
because uh, we own a brand called Sea Dog, which was a small brewery in the state of Maine that we oh, purchased yeah. about 14 yeah, years ago. Yeah, I'm in Orlando. Ours just closed. Um, the Clearwater Brewery? No, the one right by Disney. I used to stop there sometimes after I left the oh, park, so right, I'm bummed when right, that right, one closed. Right, right. So we introduced Sea Dog Seltzer about um, um, probably about 11, 12 weeks ago. Mm. And um, it's obviously hard seltzer, and it's all the flavor profiles kind of match up with the beer profiles, blueberry, raspberry. It is incredible how the sales have just exploded. So we're now in the second revolution of malt beverages in America with the seltzer category just taking over. Mm-hmm. Taking, I mean, I know it's disappointing in some respects, but it is what it is, and, and you're part of it or you're not. Yeah, well, I, I think you, you've kind of hit it, the nail on the head. You're either part of it or you're not. And what we're going through as a society with kind of being trying to be more health conscious, I think it's almost a move that you have to make to kind of protect who you are and the industry you're in. I will tell you, if you're a brewery that's not looking towards seltzer right now, I'm sorry. Yeah. I think you're missing out on a huge market segment. Um, and as you said it, that shelf space for a beer product right now is pretty damn crowded. I think you're absolutely right. Um, you know, as far as this generation's con- um, uh, placing so much importance on what they view as a healthy lifestyle, when you drink a 16-ounce can of Binder uh, Shipyard's New England-style IPA at 350 calories um, versus 100-calorie um uh, hard seltzer, you know, it's, it's, a, it's tough to fight, fight that fight for that consumer. Yeah. Um, what's that big part? Don't tell me, don't tell me that there's calories in beer. They just don't, just don't eat. Right. <laughs> just don't yeah. eat liquid chicken. Yes. <laughs> well, I thought the hard seltzer thing, how I kind of viewed it was it was um, giving somebody an option who may not be a fan of beer, but is getting dragged to, you know, breweries. And because in Florida, we had MIA seltzer like blew up, um, MIA brewing in Miami, and you would find their seltzer all over the place. And then all this, like maybe like a year after that, you started seeing everybody make their own. And I felt like it's like these breweries aren't somewhere you just take beer and go. Well, unfortunately, right now they are a little bit, some of them, but they're somewhere where you hang out, their community. So it's like you kind of need to, to cater. Yeah, yes, you should try this. You never know what you're going to like, but I, I think it is. Like, I'm not a huge seltzer fan, but I love that I can go with my stepmom who doesn't like beer and she'll drink a seltzer. You know, I can go with the right. people who don't right. like beer and they still enjoy it now. And, this, yeah, the seltzer craze, I mean, every, they're loving yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you got to make a seltzer now. That's so, that's like my so mom, sure. you know, she can't drink actual beer. So we take her and she gets seltzers at breweries, just like you said, because she's gluten-free. So seltzer is definitely a big market that's good to tap into. So circling back to Pumpkinhead. Um, our sales of pumpkin this year have um, have been equal to last year, despite COVID nineteen, which is a remarkable number, and also with the fact that the seltzer category is sucking out of every category. They're taking business from beer, from wine, from spirits. So for the pumpkin to pumpkin head to sustain its numbers from last year against all these odds is a tremendous. You know, I'm very thankful. I'll leave it at that. Um, but it just speaks to the fact that the beer resonates across all categories. Men, women, Idaho, Boston, sugar, cinnamon, rimmer, put a shot of vodka in it, use it for mixology. <laughs> it's a versatile beer, and it's a delicious beer. And oddly enough, and I'll share it with you guys, it's one of the beers that we get the most complaints about. It's also the beer we get the most um, accolades for. So it's a very, <laughs> the purists don't like it, but the majority of the people do. Look, I I drink, you know, a lot of plenty of beers. It's a lot of plenty, you know, craft beers, all that kind of stuff. But nothing will ever beat the pumpkin head to me. And I tell you right now, if I was still living on the East Coast where I can get shipyard at my, my, my store or my Hannaford's, I would probably single-handedly make push you past sales of last year for that reason alone because it is – I can't gush about it enough. It's, I was telling these guys, it's so super easy – it is. It is like the super smooth. It is. It's fall time to me. It reminds me of home, and so that that's. Oh man, I just can't. I 
I got to get off the soapbox, otherwise you're going to see me cry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when people ask how I got into craft, I always joke. I'm like, I got into it in the most, you know, basic white girl way ever. It was Pumpkinhead. It was Shipyard Pumpkinhead and Sam Adams Oktoberfest. It was like I had these amazing little beers, and then Christmas rolls around. I'm like, oh, well, what Christmas beers are there? And then St. Patrick's Day rolls around, and I'm like, why does this Bud Light taste like seltzer water? Because I ruined my palate, yeah. and I couldn't go back. <laughs> so here I am in Scarborough, Maine. Um, what is it? You know, late August. Tonight it's 58 degrees out. The fog is oh, rolling in. Man. And it's damp, and it's cool. And I got a pumpkin in here right in front of me, and it tastes friggin' amazing. I'm going to... <laughs> Gotta be right back, guys. I'm gonna go cry into my pillow because now I'm like insanely <laughs> homesick. But I will also say, Bruce, real quick, I will that that video you guys put out the ad for uh, the pumpkin head this year. Oh, that's that's awesome. gotta be another big factor why the sales are so good because that video was like the best thing that I've seen. Wait a minute, in forever. Wait the one minute. last year was really good too. He was in like the pool and he like throws all the yeah. toys away. Or yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You just gave me an idea, Mash. Next time you got to get a copy of the file and we can play it. Oh, oh you're right. Next time I will. Uh, they they put out a few weeks ago when Shipyard first came out, or Pumpkin first came back out. They put out a really every year. They put out a good uh, ad for it, and nice. the one that they put on their Instagram and socials this year was amazing. Someone it was basically like quarantine day one, day two, whatever, and nice. it was it was amazing. Someone find the link for it and drop it in the chat there real quick. But that uh, that does that definitely does bring on us to mind. We can play videos in this stream as well. So if we need to do a little research <laughs> into them know. and uh, get the video, I in will. There. We'll do I will also say that anytime I had somebody come visit me back home, like my grandma, who was 70 something years old, she's not mm -hmm. big into beer, but we took her to the shipyard brewery because, first of all, I don't go there without spending like $800 in that the merch alone because your guys' uh, store is amazing. But she even loved the pumpkin head. So it is really an all inclusive beer, circling back to what you were saying, how it was you know, for men, women, all sorts of age demographics. Yeah. So, and, and, drinking and, one right and now. That, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're good. You can go. Yeah, and that cinnamon sugar rim, which has become kind of like the trademark presentation of the beer on draft, wasn't created by us. We're not nearly so smart. It came out <laughs> of basically the greater Boston market, and I, I wish I could give credit to the proper um, um, initiator of it, but somebody or some bar in Boston came up with a cinnamon sugar rim. We then took it and ran with it and created a kind of a, a blended rimmer with nutmeg and all all spice and smells up. Mm -hmm. But the traditional pint served pumpkin head with a cinnamon sugar rim is just decadent. You cannot beat it. You can't beat it. <laughs> I will die on that hill. Uh, that's awesome. So do you guys, I'm assuming you do some variations. Because um, I'm not, I'll just admit, I'm not Smash a pumpkin, pumpkin. I'm not a pumpkin beer this. fan. Um, I've had pumpkin head, obviously. That is kind of a uh, a default. I think if you're going to try a pumpkin beer, that's definitely one that you're going to pick up or find pretty readily available. Uh, what are what are some variations? Some uh, other? Do you do some aging? Do you do some barrels? What kind of uh, what kind of adjuncts yep. can you find in it? So on the pumpkin theme, we have another beer called Smash Pumpkin. Which is I'm the pumpkin head? Milk. Pumpkin head is about forty percent wheat, and the smash pumpkin is all malt. It's nine point two five percent ABV. It packs a punch. It's very subtle in the pump, pumpkin flavor, and we also age that in barrel and serve it as barrel aged. Uh, sell it barrel aged two and three years later. So we've taken the pumpkin beer down the line, um, as you can say, and actually next year I don't have all the details to share with you. We've a collab we're collaborating with a, um, a regionally famous tattoo designer and artist out of Boston, Mass. And next year we plan on doing designer cans and a limited release of Pumpkinhead with this artist's interpretation of the pumpkin and the Headless Horseman. So it's going to be really cool. Oh, my goodness. I am going to get my hands on so much of that somehow. I don't care what I got to do. But that sounds amazing. So I will tell you, Stop on a plane. I, I just admitted that I'm not a pumpkin beer fan, but your description of smashed pumpkin makes me want to try it. I got it right here. I'm mm. drinking one right nice. now, actually. It's really Yeah, good. baby. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> in our household, my I, I wife lucked into, getting, I lucked into getting a couple today, and so I'm, I had to break them out. Yeah, I think what I don't like about the typical pumpkin beer is it's light, and there's a lot of pumpkin flavor to it. 
But if you're doing something that's malty like that, I think I might enjoy something like that. I'm going to have to see if I can find it. How far is that beer distributed? Um, well, I always say the expression a mile wide and inch deep or across the United States, but you know, you never know where you're going to find it. Gotcha. Um, but it's interesting to your point about the pumpkin being light and a little bit too pumpkin flavor. Uh, I don't disagree. I've tried a lot of different pumpkin beers to make sure that we always try to measure up. Ours is quite subtle and mm-hmm. that's why whether it's a rimmer or the addition of a shot of Southern Comfort or the addition of a shot of Pinnacle Whip Vodka, the beer is the base and it's, it's, it's simple and it's easy and you can do so much with it. And that's kind of like the magic. Yeah, man, you've got, you've, you're nailing all the parts for all the basic women out there. I can tell you that right now. The whipped, the whipped whip vodka, the, 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 yeah, that is awesome, man. You guys are nailing that market. I'm, I hope you guys Instagram tweet, do whatever you do. I hope you do it the hell out of it for that pumpkin beer, because there'll be a lot of people out there buying that with the pinnacle yeah. whipped vodka. <laughs> Well, that's not all we are, but that is certainly a big part of who we are. <laughs> yeah. you know, like, they, they do make a good and, smash and be proud beer. of it. Yeah, man. Uh, hey, smash beer. right now, I'll be honest with you, if I could just be a brewery that brewed Bud Light, I would take it. <laughs> right? If you're, I hear you talking. Yeah, man. Yep. If, you're, if you're good at one thing and you do it well and people are clamoring for it like they are, stuff like that, man, just own it and ride it because – there are a lot of breweries that struggle to even reach that, um, especially with 8,000 of them out there. So definitely uh, definitely take pride in that. That's an accomplishment. And it, it is it is a popular beer. It's one of those that when it hits the shelf, it doesn't last long wherever I do see it. So um, definitely a good job with that one. You guys so I encourage so. all your listeners and, and the three of you um, to come visit us. Um, we're right downtown Portland on the waterfront. Got a great casing room. Portland is a very cool, hip city. Um, and oddly enough, I've been in Boston and Providence and New York in the last month, and these cities are they're desolate. Um, people are afraid. And yet you come to Portland, and there's high energy, there's activity, people are wearing masks, they're distancing. But we've, we've, got, a, we've got a good vibe going here. So, um, yeah, spread the word. Come see Shipyard, come see Portland. Awesome. Yes. Oh, yeah. I can, I'll back Portland, that. Shipyard's Maine. tap room. Sorry, yeah. go ahead, Hop. No, I was just going to say Portland, Maine's been on my list for a while. We did Portland, Oregon a couple of years ago, and everyone's like, yeah, but have you been to Maine? That's the better Portland. Yes. And uh, we oh. had a shipyard in Orlando a few years ago, and it closed like right before craft beer kind of like totally exploded. I, but that was where I think I had my first, uh, my first pumpkin head. But I actually have a question yeah. I'm sure you've heard me mention before uh, that, you know, I, I'm in Orlando, so I go to Epcot a lot, and you guys do a lot of festival beers. Are those exclusive, like, batches for Disney? Yeah, well, they're not exclusive to Disney, but um, when you're ma- mentioning the um, the Maple Bacon Porter, which is a huge hit, by the way, oh, yeah, that was a draft-only nice. item oh. in Florida for uh, principally Universal and Disney. Oh, um, okay. We have not yet packaged that, but certainly we're like going, wow, maybe we got something here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I get it I every will buy it immediately. It's only flower and garden is the only time I can usually find it in America. And I always, it's a staple. My mom and I go straight for the maple bacon porter. It's delicious. Yeah. But there's sometimes yep. very unique, creative ones too at, you know, Halloween time and at Christmas time. I think there was like an eggnog one. That, I mean, oh it legit tastes God. like eggnog. Yes. You, you are good. I love you are eggnog, good. too. I have not had these. Ugh. It's, well, called only straight to the, get it's, called, it's called Straight to the Noggin. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Hell yeah. I love that name. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> well, Bruce, so one... white ale with eggnog and, and uh, you know, a little bit of nutmeg and spice, about 6.5%. Yeah. yeah, it's a holiday oh, beer for sure. Guys, yeah. This is why Shipyard is like my favorite brewery. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't see. Come on in. Like I said, Port, like, oh my God. Oh if my you ever heard God. Listen, you hear me talk about Portland and Shipyard every episode, and this is exactly why. Yes, he really does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Literally every single episode. Well, Bruce, we've probably wore out our welcome in your time, but one thing that we always oh, ask 45. our 
guest is if we were to belly up at your bar right now in your tap room with what you have on tap, what would it be that you pour the four of us? Well, first of all, the only reason why I, I feel like I've, I've got to get off this call is because my, my bottle of beer is empty. Mm. <sighs> Otherwise, I would chat all night. Yeah. You can't let but, that um, happen. And then when people ask, which beer would you have? What's your favorite beer? Blah, blah, blah. I always go, whatever the beer is in my hand at the time, that's my favorite beer. <laughs> and, nice. and That's a good, yeah, that's good we, we We have 18 beers on draft. Um, yes, I like some more than others, of course, but if you're with me and I can treat you to a pint of beer, it won't matter what it is. I'll enjoy your company. Man, that's awesome. We definitely appreciate your time and we yeah. enjoyed your company tonight and to learn about shipyard brewing, uh, from you. That's pretty amazing. And thank you for your dedication to the beer industry yes. and shipyard, man. That is, that is phenomenal to hear it from people like you that's been involved in the organization that long. That's well, awesome. Thank you for having me on air. I'm sorry that I was a little uh, remiss like hey. three weeks ago and not calling. <laughs> I thought you were going to call me. But, no, no. Uh, man, if you guys all. want. Hey, stuff if, happens. If, if you guys want some um, um, other items to be available for people putting in for a raffle, please reach out. Uh, you know, we encourage people to come visit us and. And we'll give them reason to come see us. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I will definitely get with you after this. I'll, I'll shoot you an email again. We can link up. Um, and I can't I can't wait to get back home just so I can make the trek about an hour north and get back to that tap room. Oh, that's my <laughs> that's that's my holy place. Breaking to the choir. I'm so bad now. Oh my yeah. god. We can all stay at I my mean, parents' house and we're all gonna go to we're all going to shipyard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Well, Bruce, appreciate you, man. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your dedication to the industry and shipyard. And uh, have a great evening. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you all for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, anytime. It was a lot of fun, man. Thank Cheers, you. Bruce. We'll talk again. Bye-bye. Now I need to go in the attic and get the Halloween decorations out. This is why I don't drink pumpkin beer till the first Guys, fall, it is fall now. Just, now. Oh. now <laughs> just, is it all that you I want? I transform that that was everything I needed. That was everything I needed today. I was in a terrible mood all day. Terrible mood. And uh, like, that that turned that's I just needed that. I needed Let's that. go <laughs> let's go check in with Hoppy in beer school and stick around to the end cuz we're going to give away some special prizes here in just a second. Don't leave during my beer school to make me sad. I have all these glasses yeah, I, ready to go. <laughs> I'm right. excited for this beer school. All right, I have to be careful because I'm really concerned I'm going to break glasses. Today is uh, proper glassware. It's not the beer snob. Okay. Does beer get a glass? If you're at home or a bar, then yes. Camping, hiking, and drinking near the ocean are exceptions. And a petty topper. What does the glass the beer can or bottle doesn't? It can actually decrease how bloody you get. When your beer is poured into a glass, it loses some carbonation and therefore you swallow less gas. But it doesn't prevent you from sounding like Barney from The Simpsons. Proper glassware also helps you to get all of the flavor out of your beer. Taste is not the only sense used to enjoy a The sound of beer pouring into a glass is the most beautiful sound you'll ever hear. Sight and smell also weigh in. Glassware helps you to see the liquid and it helps you to smell the aroma. The smell before the taste is huge. If you get that amazing smell before you even ever taste the beer, it's going to cause you to enjoy the taste even more. Of course, this depends on the beer and the glass. So, which beer gets which glass? Well, ABV plays a little bit of a role in this. Lower ABV beers tend to get bigger glasses that lean towards like a pint glass or a mug, to, and it also helps you get bigger gulps. Higher ABV tend to be more flavorful and are better served in glasses that are rounded at the top, allowing the aroma to be trapped in the glass and smaller sips to be taken. That way you smell it every time you take a sip. Head retention is another factor that comes into play depending on the style. Like with many things beer, a Google search will send you down a rabbit hole. So... I'm doing my best here because there's a lot of misinformation out there. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of follow <laughs> fake the Cicerone news. guidelines. Yeah, fake news. Well, the Cicerone guidelines is what I kind of followed, but I did a little bit of tweaking. Um, and Cicerone, if you don't know what that is, it's basically a beer sommelier, like the wine. Part. And when I post this on the website, I will have pictures. So this is not an exhaustive list, but it's plenty. So the first glass we have is a shaker pint. So a shaker pint is for... 
at Nova Southeastern University. That's where I went to law school. Oh. oh. This is basically for Murica beer. You know exactly what I mean. I don't need to describe it. The aroma escapes in this wide mouth glass, but you're drinking it super cold to mask the lack of flavor. So a basic pint glass is perfect. It's also really cheap, which is why a lot of uh, bars and whatnot will have that. Okay, next is a snifter. This is one of my favorites. This is for Imperial like Stouts, that. Strong Ale, Double IPAs, and Belgium Dark Ales. This is Civil Society, yeah. which I think... So the shape here keeps the aroma in the glass and allows you to be able to enjoy the aroma with each sip because your nose is in there. You can even swirl it for increased aroma. Next is a footed pilsner. I only have a Christmas footed pilsner, so <laughs> this is for basically German and Czech pilsners. It's kind of a light. Beer. She's on a Christmas. I know. It's <laughs> Mary, Mary, or Marius. Okay. And then we have a goblet or a chalice this is going to be for um belgium strong ale belgium doubles belgium triples and berlin or weisses the wide mouth helps it to maintain head and allows you to get deep sips I'm already running out of room. nice and deep sips the tulip deep. <laughs> tulip is for belgium style abbey ales ipa saison scotch ale and imperial stouts you can see, like, the bowl kind of traps some of the smell, but it still lets it kind of, I don't know. See, I don't know. See, a lot of these, you can use the same glass for the for multiple beers. But all the bowls, that's what it's for, is to trap the kind of, to trap the smell. Flute. We're back My here. bowls do often trap the smell. <laughs> this is Jesus Christ. Abbey Ale. I'm sorry. Vienna, I'm sorry. Flute is for Vienna Lager's Lambic Flanders Red Ale. This glass showcases carbonate and IPA. I hate this glass. I think it's terrible. But this is called an IPA glass for IPAs. Um, supposedly the ripples at the Literally bottom... Literally never seen that. I really? think I've used one once. Mm, absolutely never. Because I, I don't like them either. Them, but the ripples at the bottom are supposed to like stimulate the aroma. Apparently this was designed mm. by Ken Grossman and Sam Taglioni from Dogfish and Sierra Nevada. So it's not a very old glass, but I don't know how the hell y'all have this. I have. Okay. I just, not often. Wisen. Everyone's seen this one. This is basically what you drink any wheat beer out of that's not also a sour. Um, these glasses are extra big to create a large amount of head mm. at the top because a lot of the flavor and aroma gets trapped in the head. And the thin bottom allows the yeast to stay at the bottom while you drink. <laughs> really better. This is for European loggers. I don't know why, but it's Beer mug. So beer mug hey. is used for Oktoberfests, loggers under 6%, and stouts. This is kind of beers that you want to keep cold, so that's why you're not actually touching it. And fun fact I learned today, this brewery, Concrete Beach, is in um, Miami in the Wynwood area, and it's owned by Sam Adams, and apparently they're turning it into a dogfish. So Miami's going to have a dogfish head brewery. Wah, wah. I know. <laughs> why did you say that name? But you can walk to Jay Wakefield. So walk to Jay Wakefield if you ever go there because they're awesome. And they have Darth Vader painted on the wall. Um, Stang glass. This is for Kolsch, Goza, Lambics. This is basically for delicate beers. It keeps it kind of consolidated so you get more of like the flate, the taste or whatever in each one because it's, it's, I don't know, it's delicate. I'm delicate. Tulip pint. <laughs> this is basically what you get your Guinness glass out of or your Guinness beer out of. And British and Red Ales. Nothing too fancy. I'm almost done. I have two left. New Nick I cannot pint. believe you have all of these glasses. Keep all these this glasses. isn't even Jesus. half of my glasses. <laughs> this isn't even half. New Nick Pint is, is British wild. and Irish ale or IPA. Again, you have the little ridge, so that kind of locks in some mm. of the aroma. The last glass is the most controversial glass. It has no rules, and it's my no. favorite glass. Oh, I love that one. The Tiku. That's the one that the... Um, Believe in beer was served in. Oh, oh nice. I think it's sexy. Yeah, yeah, there's really no rules. Um, you drink. I actually already rinsed this glass out because this is what I'm going to be drinking my next beer out of. Okay, so beer clean. And Matt, you, or all of you need to listen to this. This is more important than you realize. There's a thing called beer clean. So for one, the cleanliness of your glass can impact the flavor of your beer. Second, if you post a picture of a dirty glass on social media, you will be judged whether you know it or not. I should warn you, 
once I teach you what beer clean is, you will cringe anytime you see somebody post a dirty glass. If it is beer clean, there will be no carbonation sticking to the wall of the glass. So no tiny bubbles stuck to the wall. I'm not talking about the bubbles that raise. I'm talking about the teeny bubbles that are stuck. Um, okay. So like this? Yeah, I'm done. No, oh, no, no, no. Lucky's uh, toast. That's fine. That's above. I was going to say, I like literally took this When you first pour the beer, the beer's still in the glass, the little bubbles that are around the beer. So, okay, so if you're going to drink at home, wait, where was I? Damn it. As you drink a clean glass, Sorry, it will also leave a nice me. lace around the glass. So you actually want it to leave head around the glass. You want a nice lace. So how to make oh. sure your glass is beer clean at home. I'm glad you asked. So, don't wash your glasses with dishes. Food residue can stick to your precious beer glassware. So you're going to need to hand wash. Use a separate sponge to wash your beer glasses than you use for food dishes. Yes, I have two sponges in my sink, and yes, everyone thinks I'm crazy. Use <laughs> natural dish soap. There are other beer recommendations out there because the oils in dish soap can actually mess up the, the beer cleanliness, but I think using just natural soap is fine. But I don't own a brewery, so there you go. Let the glasses air dry on a rack with proper ventilation and rinse the glass with water immediately before putting beer in it. Before our ho hoppy hours, I actually have like three or four glasses I rinsed out and set here ready to, to have beer poured in so I don't have to get up. Oh. So, as long as you follow these beer clean rules and use proper glassware, you can achieve maximum taste and aroma from your beer and be called anything from beer smart to fucking crazy. So here's the proper <laughs> glassware. Cheers. Cheers. God, I've been drinking on dirty glasses my whole life. I know, right? She says that, and I'm pretty sure my glass is filthy. <laughs> You're disgusting. Just rinse it out before you put it in, because any, like, dust or anything that gets in there, like, the carbonation, I guess, cleans to, clings to the dirt or whatever. So I didn't know that until I took the Cicerone CBS course. Like, I'm a certified beer server. And uh, now every time I see somebody post a picture that what? there's bubbles on the glass, it's like... Ah. She teaches law by day. Yeah. So yeah. Beer by night. We should oh, be I've promoting that. No beer glass can escape her like, sight. I thought you were a lawyer. I'm like, I am a lawyer. But this <laughs> is fun. And they send me home with free beer at the end of the night. Yeah, so I'll do it. The talents are endless. So I just have to endless. say, um, picked up some beer yesterday from our good friend and one of our, form, our founding host, Dano. And he still works for uh, Appalachian Mountain Brewery. He asked me to come over and drink a beer with him and uh, showed up. And he had a newest cool out of can. AMB, Low and Hazy IPA. And if anybody's been watching the shows, and these guys definitely know it, um, and I'll go back to the four of us, uh, loggers and pilsners are my jam in the summer. Because they're low alcohol, they're refreshing, you can drink the hell out of them and keep on going. This is an amazing IPA that comes in at, I don't know if you can see it, 4%. 4 4.1? 4 4.1%. 4 4 wow. 4 that's, that's crazy. So you that is, that yeah, it is, and I will tell you, it is crushable. It's exactly what I've been looking for for tailgates because I do love IPAs. I'm not going to lie to you, I'm... I love a great IPA. What I don't love about them is how heavy they are, and how, you can't tailgate with IPAs. You just can't. Well, you can't. You can. Well, you, you just you, typically you don't make it to the game. It's still you, like ninety degrees, you can't. Well, I, I will. I will preface by saying my tailgating starts about six in the morning, guys. I'm literally <laughs> at the tailgate Lord, parking lot. <laughs> pretty it's a early. Noon game. You gotta get there early. Yeah, I mean it's it's a long day for me. So, but yeah, this is uh, it's exactly what I would hope somebody would put out is a great IPA at a low ABV. And I will tell you, the guys at A and B never disappoint me, anyways. But it's a great beer. Uh, it's what we're going to be down at Total Wine promoting uh, the activation of this beer for that account um, next Thursday. And it hits the shelves, I think, the Friday after you can pick it up in the stores and at AMB. Here's what I'm going to do, though. I do have a connection. Tomorrow oh. night, anybody that donates, I'm going to pick the random drawer from Hops News. I've got a few of these still left. 
I'm going to send you some of them. You're going to get them before they're even released in the store. Uh, so you'll be able to get some of them prior to the release. And here's another kicker. I'm going to pick a random drawing from our Hops News family member, and when they're released, I'm going to send them a six-pack of it. Uh, so somebody in the Hops News family is going to get a six-pack of that as soon hey, as I can me, get your family. To <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you guys, you guys will definitely get some of it. I will definitely I thought, make. I thought we were a family day. <laughs> I will definitely make sure that I get some of it to you guys and Brad. I seen Brad just dropped a donation in there. Brad, appreciate that. Uh, we'll definitely make sure you guys get some of it. I owe Brad a box, so it'll definitely come out, and I'll get you a sticker. Um, Mash, I see you uh, pointing at the board back there. I know you don't have North Carolina up yet, but I'll get you a sticker. Great episode, guys. Yeah. Let's go check in with Mash. Mash. Where can people find in your parting shots? Yes. So I was pointing because I have Common Law's T-shirt actually behind me. Brad, Brad got him out this week. I got mine Tuesday. I promised him I would wear it. However, shipyard and then uh, <laughs> the brewing the other night, so I didn't wear it. But I wanted, to, I still wanted to promote it out and pimp him out. Common Law Brewing uh, down in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Check them out soon. That they will be coming. Open up their doors hopefully in the spring, and hopefully we'll be there. Um, other than that, uh, you guys got to hear me fangirl a little bit. I, I could not thank Bruce enough. That was a really great time. I, I miss Shipyard. I miss you know I miss Portland. I miss home. So it's always great to have a little slice of home. And uh, other than that, Hoppy and I just dropped Hops Geek News, our latest episode where we talk about the DC Fandom event that happened last Saturday. That just came out on our YouTube, youtube.com slash Hops News. And it's going to be on all streaming sites. And uh, yeah. Find us at Hops Geek News on the Instagram and Matthew Tyler on the Instagram, and that's where I will be. So uh, thanks again to Bruce for coming out, and shout out Common Law Brewing. Yeah, it's awesome, man. I'm looking forward to you being in the driver's seat next week. That's going to be pretty amazing. Can't so wait. Check yeah, in next Thursday. Still, next Thursday, MASH is going to be in the driver's seat. Appreciate you, MASH, as always. Let's go check in with Lucky. Lucky, parting shots, and where can people find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Feelin' Lucky Pod. It's Feelin' without a G, Lucky P O D. Um, I, you can find, I, I guess that's all. All you want to, or the only place you want to find me. Um, sorry, I just got a message. I, uh, gonna have to hop off as soon as you got as we... a you up text at eight o'clock <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, whatever um yeah no it's parting shots i'm all over the place now um parting shots again thank you so much to everyone that tuned in on tuesday shout out bruce bruce was awesome and he gave me about 50 beers that i want to try now yeah um so i gotta find some of that shipyard that shipyard shit i guess um but yeah it was a fun episode. I'm totally like not focused. I had something to say, but whatever. He had something to say. Some person. girl DM'd him, and he's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's like I'm me with the with the pumpkin fancy. head. Now he's all hot and bothered. Oh, so no, yeah, out. basically. Oh, so he's gonna feel. Lucky. I'm just Pre- waiting for my dog to go crazy because someone's gonna be here really soon. So awesome. Appreciate I loved you when you yelled at Beef on the last episode when his parting <laughs> shots was like, "I don't know. I think I have the login for," and, and you're like, "I gave you the login." That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. Yeah. That was funny. He's just a muscle of the episode. <laughs> Yeah. All right, go to someone else because I gotta get my door. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Checking in with Hoppy. Hoppy, parting shots and where can people find you? And what can we look forward to with Disney Beer now that it's opened back up? Um uh, parting shots, the Hoppy Mommy on Untapped and Instagram and Hops Geek News. Yeah, we dropped it, the new one on YouTube. We should have the other one on the podcast places tomorrow. Um, as far as Disney, I mean, Epcot was, yeah, it gets really hot with the mask on, but it was just awesome to be back in there. So, um, like I said before, Tuesday, I will definitely have a Star Wars video out. Um, I might make MASH cry a little bit with jealousy, but uh, I'm going to get, I already got a reservation for the cantina. I'm going to get some sweet Aww. beer shots in the cantina. Uh, probably some Toy Story shots as well. So, um, I, how they have it set up is I can't go whenever I want, and I did not renew my little kids' passes, so I also have to, like, make sure my husband can watch them and stuff before I can go. Um, but So I won't be going as much as I was going, but I will definitely get out some new Disney material 
Uh, it's it's very different, but it's very much so the same at the same time. And uh, it's empty. It's like if you went the night before a hurricane. I mean, it's it's lovely. Of course, there's no wind now. The night before hurricanes are always the best days to go to Disney because it's just it's dead and it's windy and it's beautiful. All the out of state. All the we're gonna die. Right. Yeah. And meanwhile, you know, we're walking through Epcot and there's sandbags everywhere, and we're like, this is lovely. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's nice to not have the crowds. It really is. Awesome. Well, we're definitely looking forward to that polished website that's being developed right now, thanks to our Hops Soon, News family right? members. Yep. Thanks to those yeah, Hops awesome. News family members. It's going to be pretty awesome. Um, if you're interested in joining, a lot of great benefits. I will tell you, I'm kicking around some ideas to happen with inside the Patreon group. Um, and one of those ideas is some sort of uh, monthly raffle box with some amazing beers that these guys send me and oh, yeah. that I get access to. So I'm thinking we're going to make that a Patreon-only uh, opportunity. Um, so if you're interested in being a part of it, you've got to join the Patreon group. Uh, also, some phenomenal beer exchanges going on there. A lot of the beer that you guys see these folks drinking, they have available um, to do some beer exchanges. So definitely look us up. You can find Hops News anywhere. Just search at Hops News, even on the Patreon, at Hops News, and you'll find us there. Been a great episode. We appreciate you. Don't forget to uh, donate. Entered for the drawing for the bomber jacket and some of the new beer before it hits because I got a couple of them left, and I'll send it out, mail it Saturday priority you'll have it tuesday of the week that it hits so what? yeah hit that hit that donation button up. appreciate you cheers cheers everybody cheers love you guys all right i gotta go get hey. the pumpkins out of my attic now josh <laughs> uh gotta get off yeah you're gonna get off huh? <laughs> all right i'll see you guys i bet you are later man did you just say I already got off? Like, no, Lucky's getting off. We already knew this, though.